Thanks for watching The Fumble. All right, we usually keep you up to date on all things currently happening in the sports world, but today we're gonna change it up just a little bit. We're gonna take a quick trip down memory lane and reflect on the journey taken by your very first fumble goat, the one and only Michael Jordan. Let's start from the beginning. It all started February 17th in 1963 in Brooklyn, New York though he spent most of his childhood in North Carolina. According to MJ's dad, he was displaying signs of becoming a future legend at an early age. His dad once said, what he does have is a competition problem. He was born with that. The person he tries to outdo most of the time is himself. Here's the funny thing. Jordan was actually cut from his high school varsity basketball team. The next year, he tried out again for varsity, made the team, and became a McDonald's All-American in basketball, which by the way, means you're one of the top 24 players in the country. Jordan attended the University of North Carolina Carolina in 1981 and quickly became a key player on their team. Carolina went on to win the NCAA Division I championships in 1982, with Jordan of course scoring that final basket needed to beat Georgetown University. We should have known then. Nice little preview of what was to come. Jordan left college his junior year to join the NBA. He was drafted by the Chicago Bulls in 1984, and just like that, the NBA legend was born. In his rookie year, he averaged 28.2 points per game and helped lead his team to playoffs. He received the NBA Rookie of the Year award and was selected for the All-Star Game. Uh, on behalf of Miller uh, Bruin Association, I'm very happy to receive the award, although, uh, you know, Keem and other rookies in the league that just the same one award as I have. This guy did, by the way, finish his bachelor's degree while playing in the NBA. During the 86-87 season, he became the first player since Wilt Chamberlain to score more than 3,000 points in a season. He also received his first MVP award. He went on to receive four more of those in the years 91, 92, 96, and 98. The Bulls won the NBA championships in the years 91, 92, and 93, and were dominating the league that's when tragedy struck. MJ's dad was shot and killed by two teenagers after the 93 season, causing Michael to retire from basketball and play baseball, something he said his dad had always wanted to see him do. He was an outfielder in the minor leagues for a year, but he couldn't stay away from his true love, basketball, for long. He came back to the court in 95 with the Bulls and helped them win back to back to back championships over the next three years. You know, this, I can't even put it in words. My father said what it means to me. This is for Daddy. MJ started in all 82 games in the 96-97 season, and the Bulls had a winning record of 72-10, which until beaten by the Warriors in 2016 was the highest of all time. During Game 5 of the Finals that season, MJ showed the type of work ethic and determination it takes to be a GOAT. He was playing with a severe flu, he had a fever of over 102, was dehydrated, exhausted, and it showed but he willed through it. At the half, they hooked him up to some IV fluid to help him hydrate for the remainder of the game. Jordan finished that game with 38 points, seven rebounds, five assists, three steals, and one block with the flu. That's a great game for a healthy player. This, a legend does make. Not surprisingly, MJ was also one of the most vicious players to ever play. We saw that viciousness in his actual game and at times directed at other players on the court. Jordan retired from the NBA again after that season, only to eventually come back again. He was a part owner of the Washington Wizards for a bit and then decided to relinquish those responsibilities and just get back on the court with the Wizards between the years 2001 and 2003. But when he hung up his jersey in 2003, it was for good that time. In 2009, he was inducted to the Hall of Fame. And by the way, guess who he invited? Remember that coach that cut him from the varsity basketball team? Yeah. Him. He wanted to make sure he knew that was a big mistake. To the coach who actually picked Leroy over me, I wanted to make sure you understood you made a mistake, dude. <laughs> MJ's Hall of Fame speech has been immortalized in many, many ways, one of which being the viral, ever-present, crying Jordan face. Now, aside from being arguably the most successful NBA player of all time, Jordan is arguably one of the best entrepreneurs of all time. He's the majority owner of the Charlotte Hornets, has had countless endorsement deals throughout his career, owns restaurants, but the most successful of all his businesses has no doubt been the Jordan brand, a shoe and clothing apparel line with Nike. As of February 2017, MJ has an estimate 
estimated net worth of $1.31 billion. His resume includes professional basketball player, Olympic athlete, entrepreneur, and actor. Yes, actor. You can't talk about Jordan's career without talking about Space Jam. All right, MJ's story isn't one without scandal. Over the years, people have questioned whether or not Jordan actually retired in the prime of his career because his dad wanted him to play baseball. Here's why. In 92, Jordan was called to testify in the criminal trial of a convicted drug dealer who had a $57,000 personal check from MJ. Under oath, he admitted it was payment on gambling losses. And then in 1993, businessman Richard Aquinas wrote a book saying he won over $900,000 from Jordan over golf betting. Around the same time, MJ was spotted in an Atlantic City casino on the morning of Game 2 of the Eastern Conference Finals. After the Bulls won their third consecutive championship, the NBA launched an investigation into Jordan's gambling to see if any league rules were broken. Four months later, Jordan retired and the league dropped the investigation, saying he didn't do anything wrong. There are some people who think a deal was made between Jordan and David Stern, the commissioner at the time. Again, it's speculation. There's nothing that proves this true. MJ also had one of the most expensive divorces of all time. When he and his wife of 17 years divorced in 2006, it cost him a cool $168 million. Yeah. In 2013, he remarried to Cuban-American model Yvette Prieto. So what's Jordan up to now? Just running his many businesses that still include the Jordan brand and the Hornets. Is Michael Jordan the greatest basketball player of all time? That's up for debate, but what's not is his legacy. He left his mark on the game by changing it. For all things sports, subscribe before you go. Click that fumble logo right there, tap the bell so you don't miss any of our news, and I'll see you soon.